This is Performers Wanted. Hello and welcome back to the show, y'all. Today we're going to be talking to Joel Myers, who you definitely know as Albus Potter from Broadway production of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Let's pop in and see how he's doing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing, Joel? I'm doing good. How about you? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, we have Joel Myers today. We got Joel Myers. Potter heads rejoice. Theater heads rejoice. Uh, if <laughs> If you heard the name, you saw the thumbnail, then you probably definitely recognize this man as Albus Severus Potter, the Broadway production of The Cursed Child, which I have read. So that's why I'm pretty excited. Um, was very happy to know that you were going to uh, come into the show. And now I'm sure everyone's going to be super happy listening. Um, we're going to get into that pretty, uh, soon. Cause we kind of have to, um, <laughs> let's imagine we just go through an hour and just never talk about it once. Um, <laughs> be kind of fun. <laughs> it would be kind of fun. It's like, they're just picking when, when they're going to bring it up. When are they going to bring it up? <laughs> never. Oh, and by the way, come see the show. Oh yeah. Come, yeah. Come see the show. Yeah. It's a great show, but we never talked about it. We're not talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about it a bit. We're gonna uh we're gonna talk about um uh your tutoring program. I looked at your tutoring program, we're gonna talk about that a little bit, wanna bring that sure. into the fold a bit. Um but before we do that, um for anyone who may not know who you are for whatever reason, why don't you give a, a quick introduction of who you are? Sure. My name is Joel Myers. I uh I'm currently in the Broadway production of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I play, as you said, Albus Potter. I'm the son of Harry Potter. Um and my dad and I have a somewhat contentious relationship on stage. Um and you know, there's lots of adventure, magical adventure that ensues from there. Um I grew up in Seattle, Washington. Um you know, did a lot of youth theater out there. And then I came to uh, New York to go to school and then I graduated in the pandemic and uh, wow. here we are. <laughs> <laughs> graduated in the pandemic. What school did you go to? Columbia. Columbia. Nice. Nice. And you were, uh, yeah, you were majoring in performing and acting. Yep. Yep. Nice. Nice. Graduating in the pandemic. You know, I graduated uh, a long time ago, long before this, but I can only imagine what it was like, what was, what was that like? You know, you, like you came to you know school for performing in like the performance capital of the world. If you make it, right. here, you can make it anywhere. And then everything shuts down and you graduate. How was that like? I mean, it, you know, it, I mean, I don't need to tell anyone what the pandemic was like. It was a surreal experience for, for all of us, you know, for, for me, I think it, it, at first it was a lot of questions of what, what was going to happen. You know, I was going into my, this, this happened, the pandemic hit in the spring semester of my junior year. And so that got cut in half, went home, you know, and then I spent, I was at home until the next spring actually. And there was a lot of questions about how, how are we going to do the theater program? And I was doing my acting thesis and I ended up doing my acting thesis on zoom in my childhood bedroom, <laughs> um, which was its own fun adventure. You know, it, it was a lot of frustration, but at a certain point just kind of accepting it and being like, okay, well, here we go. What are we going to, what is this going to be? <laughs> you know, the, the graduating part of it became a slow fade at a certain point. I think by the time spring 2021 rolled around, everyone in my graduating class was kind of like, okay, let's just, <laughs> let's get over it. <laughs> let's get over it. This is the way it is. We're just going to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Understandably. So in, uh, you said you were from, uh, you were from Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When did you, uh, when did you start performing? When did you start acting? You know, I, um, I started doing, you know, productions and whatnot. Um, I think my first production was when I was in fifth grade. I was in um, A Child's Christmas in Wales, which was an adaptation of the Dylan Thomas poem. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, the that was the first, like, real theater experience on the, on the stage side of it I had. I I'd grown up going to the theater with my grandmother a lot. And mm -hmm. I used to, like, we used to write and put on plays for my great grandmother in her nursing home apartment. And so we became known at the nursing home for doing these little skits, but I didn't, you know, I didn't really connect that at the time with, you know, being an actor and, and actually mm -hmm. performing until later and, you know, in sort of, uh, 
late elementary school, middle school, and I started doing that. I started doing the the Seattle Children's Theater is a great regional theater in Seattle. They they used to have, I think, I don't know if they still have it. They should. They used to have a summer program where it was it was basically like summer camp, but you were doing a production. And I hated summer camp. I was just mm. my least favorite thing in the world, but I loved doing this because it didn't feel like camp. It felt like, oh, we're here to put on a show and do something. Right. And so I did that a, every summer for, for a number of, for at least four or five years. And, um, that's kind of what really got me into this idea of like, Oh, this is something you can do. This is something you can go and, mm. you know, do putting on a play is a thing you can do in life. Um, you don't just have to sit there and watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that sounds really fun because I too did not enjoy summer camp, but <laughs> it's, yeah, I in. mean, I know a lot of people love it. It was not my cup of tea. No, no. Like there, there are definitely aspects of it that would be like, oh, we're doing a talent show. I'll, I'd love to do that part. You know, I'd love to do a exactly. talent show. Um, you know, it's like, oh, today we're going to do like archery or something like that. I've never, I've never done that before. But everything else was like, oh, this is like daunting. This is <laughs> for me. But I did it every year up until I was like 14. So then, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty much what I was going to do. Um, so uh, you you get started. You know, you're you're in summer camp <laughs> for better or for worse, and uh, you are uh, you know starting. You're starting with a, a you know a play, and so you come home and you just continue doing that. You know, you're just uh, are you in like uh, like local theaters? Are you like in programs in school after that? Like, uh, what's the what's the bug bring you? Yeah, I did a um, couple of the productions I did, I did were local theaters. There used to be a good theater in Seattle called Stone Soup. I, I think they lost their theater space a while ago now, but they might. I think they still run camps for kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I did. That was kind of that was where I did uh, Christmas in Wales, mm -hmm. and then I started doing plays in school because the school I went to we had it was actually a class called play mm -hmm. production, and mm -hmm. so I was able to do it. I did plays through middle school. And then when I got to high school, um, I hadn't done a musical up to that point, and I wasn't mm -hmm. really interested in doing a musical, <laughs> but it, the, the, it was split into semesters, of course. So in the fall, the, our school did a musical. In the spring, they did a play, mm -hmm. but also the soccer season happened in the spring, and you couldn't do both. So I had to do the musical if I wanted to do both theater and soccer. Mm. Um, so I ended up doing the musicals in high school, m mostly because of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that, you know, and then and as I got older, then I started, you know, I grew up with a lot of, um, there was a great group of young actors who I grew up doing children's theater with, who kind of took over this, this company in Seattle called Young Americans Theater Company. Um, and it's just a bunch of basically high schoolers like putting on productions in the summer. It's like grown up children's theater. Um, and so they, they got this cool space in the round at the university of Washington. And I did uh, for a couple of summers, I did stuff with them um, before college. And that kind of sent me solidified, you know, this is something that I want to pursue mm -hmm. beyond high school. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so you weren't a, you weren't a musical guy. <laughs> I well, I be I became a musical guy, sort of by circumstance. But I was it was not I did not run into musicals like this is this is my everything. Just like you weren't like the singing the show tunes around. It's like you know what I'm going to be a star with my voice, <laughs> my acting talents. You're just like, do I have? I have to quit pro pro. I have to Broadway? Who? What? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, uh, yeah. So you know, after high school, you know, you go into college. And, um, you know, you're doing your program there. Um, you know, what was that program like? You know, I, I knew a few people who uh, went to Columbia, but I knew, you know, these people who went to AMDA, you know, different schools, you know, like, um, what would you say like your program was like and how did that like prepare you for what would come later? Yeah, the, the undergrad program at Columbia is not um, conservatory in any way. Um, it is It is a very academically focused theater program. Right. Most of the professors in the program are very brilliant theorists and writers. And, you know, there, there is a little bit of an attitude of like, why would we ever do theater when we can sit and think about it? Mm -hmm. Um, which is fantastic. And I loved all of that. The, the, the practical 
they did, they were some acting classes and, and, um, I did take a couple that I really enjoyed there, but it really came down to like who you ended up getting. And, and the most valuable classes were from adjunct professors who were actually working in the industry at the time. Um, so in that way, we, I got a little bit of insight into that. Of course they had, they did have productions in the theater department and I did a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of get that practical experience, but at a place like Columbia where, you know, again, it's not, it's not an AMDA, it's not a Tisch, mm -hmm. um, insert your favorite conservatory here. Mm -hmm. Um, you kind of have to make your own way in finding ways to actually do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and the way at, at a place like Columbia is you really, you really got to get involved in the student theater scene. And right. so I did a lot of student theater at Columbia. Um, I did musical theater. I was, I was the treasurer of the musical theater society for a while, <laughs> um, you know, which came, you know, full circle there, but, um, we had a great Shakespeare group, you know? And so, and so I, I always found a way to at least be doing a production every semester mm -hmm. I was there. Um, but, I, but it had to be sort of self guided that guided in that way. If I was going to keep right growing as an actor um because it the program itself wasn't necessarily putting up those scaffolds for me at the time um makes sense. you know and again it there's it it's kind of comes down to you know I've a lot of young people through harry potter when i ask me about this like should i go to tish should i go to a different school and you know my answer is always like it's it really comes down to like knowing who you are and i when i was applying for college the choice did kind of come down to Tish or Columbia. Mm -hmm. And I ended up going to Columbia because I knew that I, I as a person really valued and, and would get the most out of having that kind of broader mm -hmm. university experience. Um, right. And I think that I, you know, I don't, I don't have any regrets about choosing that path, even though it wasn't kind of your traditional conservatory right. Um, experience. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause uh, you know, many in you know, musical theater schools or even like art schools in general, you go in, you focus dead on that art. You focus mm -hmm. on being on time. You focus on all that stuff. But, you know, where that is, where there are like positives, obviously, like you get to like go out of high school and like focus on what you know you want to do. But there is um, sort of like a, a like a broad university experience that is kind of missed. Um and, you know, it does give you other skills as well. And it kind of teaches you a little bit of a self-reliance as well um, as you're like pushing forward um, through that. And obviously, you know, there's things that, you know, you can only get at university, you know. Um, totally, totally. Yeah. And, I, and that's not, you know, putting it's not putting down Tish or AMDA or, or anywhere. No, absolutely not. not. You know, all, I... You know. I'd offer, you know, it's, it's funny being in, in Harry Potter, my, the other sort of young lead of the show, uh, is Eric Christopher Peterson. He plays Scorpius. Um, and it's kind of the Albus Scorpius duo. Right. And he, he went to Webster conservatory in St. Louis and, you right. know, he was the, you know, it, kind of the opposite experience of me, like totally all theater all the time. And it's, it's, it's really interesting sort of sharing a dressing room with him and sort of comparing stories about how we had, took very two honestly quite different paths and ended up at the same place. And so that's kind of a cool, <laughs> I always offer that example to people who are, I'm like, you, there's more than one way to do it. Like there is no one, d despite what any sort of university or conservatory marketing will tell you, <laughs> there's like, you got to find your own path. And like, it's, it's possible to take different routes and sort of find yourself working on the things you want to work on. Absolutely. That's a perfect example. Yeah. Cause you know, that show, like it, it's, it's interesting. I was, you know, because I've I've read it. I've you know mm -hmm. read the book of it. I you know even like listened to it as well. And you know that show, you know, like it's you know Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. But that show um, focuses like heavily on Albus and Scorpius, mm -hmm. um, very very heavily, like carrying on the 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 mantle, the legacy of what Harry Potter was, and you know, the, the idea, you know, you would think you would probably be in the audience watching just like, what did they do? Like you guys, like you guys, like you like, held hands on, like on the journey to get there together. But it was just like, no, like he did this thing. I did this thing. We ended up here. And this is just kind of proof that like, it doesn't particularly 
matter that much how you get here. You 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 got here. You know, your journey is your own journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of it is like you you got it. You got to make it there and not burn yourself out by mm-hmm. kind of being in the. You know, I I'm sure I would have done fine in conservatory, but I I don't know if I would have walked away from it with the same kind of like I'm someone who mm-hmm. again Eric is Eric is someone who like he is he is all theater all the time. It's like his whole life and that is awesome and he's so good at it. I'm someone who like I need to step away and think about something else for a while and come back to it to kind of be re-energized. Right. And I think that, you know, that's the advice I give to all any young actor who asks me about it. Like, yeah, you kind of have to like do a little soul searching and be honest with yourself. About, like, what do you need to stay in it? Because that's that's more than half the battle of making it in any of these shows and staying with these shows is like you need to know not only – how to kind of cultivate the talent to be there and, and the work ethic to be there, but also like how to keep yourself loving it. Cause it is such a grind doing a show like this. Right. And just to get there. Yeah. You know, um, I want to jump into, you know, cause you're still on the, the journey. Um, sure. Graduated during pandemic, which quite as it's kept only really just ended. So, like, <laughs> is, is it over? Are we sure? I'm not, a, I'm not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> The strains kind of, you know, come out like hotcakes, but like it really just, you know, it, it really just ended. Um, graduated. Were you were you working professionally out of college or did you like were you waiting for a second? Did you book anything or like? Yeah, anything? there was. Um, let's see. I mean, I graduated in May of 2021 and I started auditioning for Harry Potter in June of 2022. So just to sort of set the timeline there, I was cast in Harry Potter. The audition, we we'll talk about that later if you want. Took a couple months, but so I kind of had a year there where I was doing a lot of um, indie projects, student projects. I did a couple like indie feature films. Um, did a, I, I was I was in a play with a with a bunch of people from Columbia, which we were supposed to have taken to the Edinburgh Fringe a couple years earlier, but then the pandemic hit. And so that didn't happen. We ended up putting it on off Broadway um, for a weekend um, in November of the year of 2021. And so I was working on that, you know, I was working on things, but it wasn't anything super, you know, steadily professional. And a lot of, you know, a lot of these, film projects I was working on. We were sort of out in the middle of the woods in the night in the cold and <laughs> really run and gun. And it was, it was a wonderful, really? you know, I, I loved it, but it was definitely, it was definitely not what I would call the like <laughs> professional yeah. set experience. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I kept myself busy and I kept myself working on things, but it, there was definitely a, a period of about a year of just kind of, you know, basically take, you know, doing these short films for pretty much no money or, or, or no money at all. And, and just kind of really trying to keep myself finding the next thing. Cause that, that was the battle that like, can I, if I can just keep myself in it, something might give, you know? Right. And, um, and then it did. And then, you know, Harry Potter came along and that was, uh, you know, that was completely unexpected. I did not, I was not even, honestly looking to join a Broadway show at that point. I, I, you know, I was, I was leaning more film television. Um, and I of course would joke to my friends like, well, you know, if they offered me a Broadway show tomorrow, I guess I wouldn't turn it down. Um, (laughs) and that is in fact kind of what happened. Um, and here we are. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was not an immediate, an immediate transition into from college to Harry Potter. There was that period of just kind of having to like get on backstage, get on actors access every day and do the self tapes. And, you know, who knows how many self tapes I did that year of just sending out into the ether and praying that someone bothers to look at it, you know? Um, And that's, you know, that's, that's what it, that's what it took for a while just to kind of find my feet. You know, I also having not grown up in New York and I didn't really do, much auditioning outside of um, school when I was in school because I was very focused on just doing, you know, okay. kind of having the college experience, doing student theater, kind of focusing on that and not trying to pull my attention away from mm-hmm. it at the time. And so I, I really landed in, you know, June of 2021, again, still like waning, but kind of the height of the pandemic. Um, 
having to kind of figure out from scratch, okay, how do, how does one even do this? Mm-hmm. How does one, you know, I didn't, I didn't have an agent here. I had an agent mm-hmm. back home, but they, they didn't operate in New York. Um, and so I was just kind of like playing my own agent for a year and just kind of really trying to figure out how does one even get their foot in the door in this industry. And it's not a right. trivial project. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Um, so I guess, I guess we'll talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've arrived. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Um, so this is essentially when something began to give. Mm-hmm. Um and I mean, you know, no slouch, but that's pretty huge that that's when things start to give kind of take it from the, from the beginning. Like how was this journey? Like, sure. Well, the beginning sta- uh, starts right here at the desk I'm sitting at now, um, as I was scrolling <laughs> actors access and I, you know, I, the, the call, the call came up, you know, they were casting Albus in, Harry Potter, you know, it matched whatever filters I had on the time. And, you know, I kind of jokingly turned to my girlfriend and was like, Hey, look, it's Harry Potter. You know, we're both massive Harry Potter fans, of course, having grown up right in the right time. And I was like, Oh, look, it's Harry right. Potter. Like, that's so funny. And then I read it and I was like, Oh, this is funny. Like they're, you know, most, a lot of Broadway, especially musical dance shows have kind of a height limit where you have got to be over five ten or something mm-hmm. for the students in Harry Potter. You're supposed to be under five seven. Uh, which hmm. I solidly meet the uh, requirement for that. And so <laughs> I was sort of laughing about it. And she's like, oh, well, you, like, you have to submit. It's Harry Potter and it's for short people. Like you like you have to submit just to do it. And I was like, I, was like, I kind of was like, oh, no, like they're never going to cast anyone out of the, you know, big shows like this have to do EPA calls mm-hmm. by the union rules. And I was like, well, they're never going to cast anyone out of an EPA. You know, that's kind of the, that's the mentality that, that you kind of get when you're doing that, when you're in this sort of long slog of just submitting things, submitting things, submitting things of no one ever looking at them. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was like, okay, fine. Like, so I submitted and the, the submission wasn't even a tape. It was just a, like a, like a picture and a resume online. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, fine, whatever. I'll, I'll submit it. I got a self tape request, you know, based on this is a podcast, but if you look at a picture of me, I, I, people have, more than one person has told me I look like Harry Potter. So, you know, it wasn't a huge, um, huge leap no, <laughs> to then hey, say, mm, maybe he wasn't. could play his son. Um, yeah. you know, so I got, I get a self tape request from that. I do the self tape, um, you know, in my, in my, I would say kitchen, but it's also my living room. Also like the rest of the entirety of my apartment. Um, and I submit that kind of thinking, ah, oh, what, you know, they're going to get, a thousand of these who knows mm-hmm. how many um the next step is i actually got an in-person callback f- that was a movement callback mm-hmm. i was like okay okay well this is okay at least i've made it past you know the screener round um right. and they kept insisting and insisting and insisting that th- this was not a dance callback this was just like a group movement callback you know and i was like okay if i'm not i am by no stretch a trained dancer in any, I, I can, I can, you know, do a, do an eight count if you tell me what to do, but I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, be mm-hmm. up here doing pirouettes or anything. Um, and so I go, you know, and I, and I grew up playing soccer, you know, I athletics, like I'm used to that sort of physical activity. When I tell you it was the like most intense 60 minutes of my life, I'm not kidding. Like it is, you know, if you haven't seen the show, it, it, there's a lot of movement, very beautiful movement in the show. Um, and it's a very, it's very much an ensemble piece. There's people, you know, moving staircases and lifting people and we do a wand dance and all this stuff. And this movement call was basically like, just can you endure 60 minutes of continuous movement? Mm. while counting in nines and sevens because magic. Um, and so <laughs> I, I'm doing this move call and I'm, you know, I'm like giving my, I'm like, I am failing at this. This is I like, Oh my God. And I, I get done and I'm winded and I'm, you know, going home. And I think I sat down on my couch and I called my mom. Cause of course I, you know, she's like, call, tell me how it went. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure my Broadway career just ended before it began. Mm. <laughs> I literally told her that. And then, you know, I think a, uh, a couple days went by and then I got called in for the, for the, ne- for the reading round. 
where you mm. go in and you sort of do the side in person. I was like, okay, thank, like, I guess I survived the movement call somehow, some divine intervention. Um, and you go in, you know, there's a bunch of people in a room, you walk in one by one, you read the scene once, maybe twice, and then you're out of there, you know? And I was like, okay, I think that went okay. Hard to know. Um, yeah. And then I didn't hear anything back for like two or three weeks, you know, and it's, you know, every, every time you go to an audition, it's, it's, there's a grieving process too, right? Cause you, you have to kind of get amped up and you have to kind of see it in your mind's eye, you know, to, to put your all into the audition and you, you got to kind of right. live that the dream a little bit every time. And then you got to let it go. Mm. And I was kind of just, you know, and for something like this, it was Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. It's Broadway. Oh, it's cool. I've made it into like round three. That's really awesome. You know, it, it, it was a process of like, okay, I gotta, I, I gotta let this go. Like if this is not the one I gotta just let it, you know, I was kind of right at the very end mm -hmm. of that, like acceptance. I'd, I'd reached, you know, the seven stages of grief. I'd, I'd reached acceptance at that point. <laughs> And then like that, that yeah, I woke up the next morning and there was another email that was like, okay, here's the rest of the schedule for the rest of the callback for the rest of the summer. You may make it to these, you may not. And so there was another day of another movement call mm. uh, with a reading call. So I went to that and then I had, um, you know, they were kind of slotting people in for different things. And I was, I was just going in for Albus all the way through Mm -hmm. And then finally they had a, um, a flying callback, a foy callback. Cause there's wire work in the show. Mm. And so I'm, that's the second, I know that that's the second to last round. And then it's the final callback, which would be a reading for the, for the, the international associate. So I go to this flying callback, which is way out in Brooklyn in this Cirque, um, warehouse. Mm -hmm. And I am not a Heights person. It should be said, um, but I was very determined, you know? And so I get up, they kind of, they get you in the harness and you're kind of like, oh, this is what I've always, I've always, you know, when you see Peter Pan, you're like, oh, I've, ah, this is always what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. like, then they, they teach you how to like kind of flip around and turn around and then they lift you all the way up to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And in the show, the, the, the sequence in the show is kind of lift you up and then you got to invert yourself upside down and come down hanging you know, sort of Superman style. And so I'm getting up there and I'm going to, I'm about to go into my dive and I'm just totally like, just get through this. Like, don't look at the ground, just, don't, just get through it. And then the guy stops me. He's like, Hey, wait, sorry. I forgot to ask. Are you afraid of heights? And I'm like 30 feet in the air at this point. I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> basically was my answer. <laughs> um, and so I survived, I survived, but it was an experience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then they had they had the uh the final round where you come in mm -hmm. and the international international associate was there and they they have you do the scene and it was a very you know it's a very nerve wracking experience sometimes people a couple of people have asked me like oh who was in the room who's in the room and I'm like I could not tell you <laughs> I looked at them they all told me their names we went around the room I know the casting director was there I know that couple other people there but the only person who i like could see was the international associate because i was like i have to pay attention to you and you're gonna tell me what to do <laughs> right <laughs> so i did the scene the scene um and he had me do it four times which he kept you know in audition that you'll do it and then they'll kind of ask for an adjustment apologies for the i live next to a um fire station <laughs> it's very new york it's very the, new york in New York. Um, we'll, we'll let that pass for a second. <laughs> I hope they get where they're going. It's very hot today. Um, so I'm doing the scene, you know, and he, he keeps asking me, he's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you do it again and try this. Da, 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 and then I'm going to do it again and try this. And we get to the, the third time and he's like, okay, I'm going to have you do it one more time. And I promise this is a good thing, <laughs> you know, because it can feel very much like you're just doing it wrong. But the truth is, if you're right. doing it wrong, they would just send you out the door, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I did that and that was the final round. And then I've been pushing back going home because I was supposed to go home in like early August just for, to visit. Mm. And I kept having to push it back because I kept getting called back for this show. Mm. And so I flew home the next day. Final callback was on a Monday. I flew home Tuesday. 
And, you know, of course, you kind of always have this fantasy of like, I'll step off the plane and there'll be a missed call on my phone or an email. Uh-huh. And I'll just be like, oh, you know, <laughs> as you're going through the exit of the airport, like, I'm going to Broadway. Um, <laughs> and that's not what happened. I turned on my phone and there was no message. I was like, okay, well, okay. We know whatever. It's less than 24 hours. A lot of decisions right. to make. Mm-hmm. Tuesday night goes by. Wednesday goes by. I'm like, oh, man. Well, you know, like this far, like they would have made the decision by now, you know, like, and mm-hmm. so I went to bed Wednesday and kind of like, ah, oh, I came so close, but oh well. Mm-hmm. And I happened to wake up early on Thursday morning because I had a dentist appointment at like 8am. Mm-hmm. And I was like half asleep. And, you know, I, I, I get a call on my phone and I get a lot of spam calls like we all do, you know, from mm-hmm. New York numbers. And I'm kind of looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. And, it, and then it, it rings through, right? And I, and it goes to voicemail. And then I'm looking at it and in the missed calls, you know how in the missed calls, it'll sometimes say like, maybe so-and-so mm-hmm. and it was maybe. And then the casting director's name. And mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, maybe I should call him back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, again, this is, you know, seven 30 in the morning, um, you know, where I've been sort of a little bit jet lagged and I'm a little bit just like, what's going on. And I call him and they're like, Hey, yeah. So we'd like you to come play Albus on Broadway. Congrats. Like being touched. I was like, great. Wonderful. <laughs> I accept. Of course. <laughs> and I ran outside and my mom was like leaving. I was like, stop, don't go anywhere. Like, mom, I'm going to Broadway. I'm excited. And then I went to the dentist and, um, I can't recommend enough. Like if you have surreal life changing, um, news broken to you, like the dentist is the best place to be. Because there's nothing you can do but sit there and process it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, as they're like, you know, working on your mm-hmm. mind. My hygienist that morning was like very much not chatty, trying to get it mm-hmm. done. And so it was, I just sat there in silence for 20 minutes <laughs> and just was like, what just happened to me? <laughs> um, and that was the, you know, that was the whole, again, that start. I, I submitted for it in like June. And this was, I think, August 25th mm-hmm. was the day that they, called me yeah so it's a that's long a process lot. you know mm-hmm. yeah that's that is crazy okay so <laughs> you're like in the you're like in the like dentist chair yeah and you're just like i just i just made broadway and i'm supposed to just be chill but i'm gonna be chill because i don't want to like die in the dentist i just don't want her to know. slice my mouth open with her <laughs> sharp <laughs> instruments absolutely not you know little shop of horror. <laughs> Uh, we don't want this ha- <laughs> to happen, but so, he, but you're, you're like out of town visiting. Like when, when do you have to go back? When's your call? Where you have to go back and kind of start the show. Yeah. We didn't start rehearsals until the end of September. So H- Harry Potter's yeah. unique in that they, you know, a lot of Broadway shows, they'll just do, they'll kind of replace people if they need to, they'll do put in rehearsals. Harry Potter does a full re-rehearse every year in October. And so the cast, all everyone's contract changes over in mid November. Um, this year it's November 10th. So I know that, um, I think, I think November 15th was when we started. And, right. and so every, like if the, if, there, if there's cast changes happening, they will all happen between that Sunday and that Tuesday in November. And okay. so, which is really great. Cause then the cast, you know, especially if you're coming in new, you kind of get a full rehearsal process six weeks in between end of September and, you know, mid November to come in, learn the show, obviously with this show, you know, so much of it is the magic. So much of it is the technical elements that you kind of like you, you, we literally go to magic boot camp in the first couple of days of rehearsal, just to learn how to do some of the sleight of hand stuff that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause none of us are magicians, but we have a great illusions team who, who, you know, get us in shape for, for all that, all that, all that jazz. Um, And yeah, so I I mean, I had, I didn't have to like turn around and come back necessarily, but I, it was a couple of weeks before I then had to like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this. We're in rehearsals. Here we go. (laughs) Boy, oh boy. (laughs) Um, And, you know, coming, coming off a year of just kind of doing your thing, it it is a very zero to 60 experience of like, man, I'm in a rehearsal every day for eight hours now. And then doing eight shows a week is like, you know, I remember the night before the first show realizing that it was like the last evening I was going to have mm-hmm. for a while 
<laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and you know, and it's, and, and it's, you know, now, now year and a half later, it feels like, Oh, this is, this is old hat now, but it was, it was a very, you know, stark life transition of just like, how do you adapt to the Broadway lifestyle? Right. 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 Um, yeah. Cause it's, it's very, very, fast moving and just being out in New York and being in that area, being on Broadway in general, like just walking down the street is stressful. So I can only imagine. (laughs) Yeah, no, luckily we are at, we're at 43rd uh, between um, 7th and 8th. And so we just kind of have to turn the corner into the subway. But uh, even that, even that, like, you know, around the corner walk is, is an adventure every night. (laughs) Right. Right. You know, I, um, cause I, I was, I was out there recently didn't get a chance to catch the show. It was like one of those things where I was like, I'm going to be out for a little bit. I was with my girlfriend. We have to see a show. We have to decide on a show. What are we going to see? And I like always kind of circled back around to Chris Chow because I, you know, because I had read the play. When as soon as it came out, as soon as it was on the shelves, I read it. Mm-hmm. And then like they were doing a lot of promotional material at the time, um, like showing just like, just think, you know, staircases moving and showing just, mm-hmm. you know, just all this stuff, I was like, this looks fantastic. I am like, oh, I didn't get a chance to see it. That is one of my major goals. Every time I go to New York, I'm going to make sure that that is in the cards, you know, because it's just. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then, you know, there. now there's a tour. So if it's, uh, if you can't catch it yeah. in New York, you can catch it in Chicago, LA, or DC, I think is the third one. They might, right. the, the Cursed Child marketing might come out for me for that, but I'm pretty sure it's DC. <laughs> right. I'm sure there are like probably there's probably people who like definitely look at you or like they know you and they'll say like you're just like okay yeah obviously you're gonna get it obviously you're gonna get it. I know that like in your brain it's like and you know like because you're in it and there's probably so many people there who went out for it so many people there at these callbacks you know like totally so you're thinking just like you know this could easily not be uh the the thing and. I mean, obviously, you know, me sitting here, I'm like meeting you after the fact, you know, a year and a half later after you've been in the show. And even me, I was not going to say it, but you brought it up. I was just like, yeah, you you look like Harry Potter. And <laughs> even your voice kind of sounds like Daniel Radcliffe when he does an American accent. You're not, uh, you're not the first person to tell me that. <laughs> oh, so just like in my, in my mind. But I know that cast and directors don't always think this way. In my mind, like, I know that like, they probably like, you probably walked in the room. They were just like, "Oh my gosh, it looks just like it. it looks just, it looks just like." It. Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a lot of young you know actors who who look and sound the part for sure. And it's 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 such a it's like the other thing I tell people too when they ask about it of like you know it's yes it's a lot of work yes it's a lot of preparation but it's it, it's so much of it too. Unfortunately, is like it, just the luck of being in the right place at the right time. And then being prepared for it, you know, there's, there is, it's not, it's not nothing to get cast in something, but there is, you do just kind of, you know, again, that's, as I said before, like the kind of waiting for something to give of like that give is you being in the right place at the right time in front of the right people and you being prepared to show that you are right for that moment, you know? And so it it is, Mm -hmm. that is the dance of this industry of like, how do you, and that's where it can, it gets super demoralizing too. Cause a lot of times you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and you're not the right mm-hmm. person for it. Or you, for whatever reason, maybe you are, and you just like have a bad day and you don't, and it slips through your fingers, you know, and that, and that's so much mm-hmm. of it. And it's, it's so hard not to take those experiences personally, you know, but it's, it is mm-hmm. kind of the, the flip side of like, you have to kind of learn to accept that like, well, you know, whatever, it's not, this is not my project. And also mm-hmm. kind of then accept like, no, like I, yes, I was the right place at the right time and I did something to earn it. You know, it's, it's the kind of yes and mm-hmm. of it all. I think that, that you have to find yeah, yeah. to be in this industry, to stay in this industry. Cause it, it is so mm-hmm. hard to go out and put yourself out every time and go through that grieving process every time. Every single time. Yeah. And it, it's like, you know, like what you brought up is just like, yeah, maybe, maybe you are right for this project. Maybe this, you know, you, like maybe you're perfect for this project, but like that day wasn't it. Maybe yeah. there was someone who was there who like they saw who might have been a little bit more perfect that day. And then maybe after you get through like the grieving process, you go back and like 
totally then you are you know you are the perfect person for this project and you get it then you know i've heard stories of people like going to something two three times before they actually book it Mm -hmm. and it's like it's like serendipitous they they are um for this project but maybe just wasn't the time for it totally no i mean there's a bunch of people who I work with at Harry Potter who I know went in multiple times for it or different, like went in for the San Francisco production and ended up at the Broadway production, you know, and it's, 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 you also just never know like the behind the scenes of like who, you know, when they're producing shows like this, it's so much about they're trying to mix and match. And it's just, it might be that you are so great for it, but there's just not that spot available for you right now, you know, and it's mm-hmm. just, there's so much beyond your control in these situations right. and it's and it and it's hard to accept you know too if like it because it does it has to feel so personal for you to go put yourself out there but you also have to kind of protect yourself by being like well right. i did my best and it's it's it, as long as you go in prepared and put it all out there the best thing you could do as an actor is get it out of your hands mm-hmm. you know and let it let it be truly out of your hands and i think that that's right. that's you know again i I preach that it's, it's very, you know, it's very hard to actually like do that in practice, mm-hmm. but I think that's the best mentality of like, if you can do everything to put the decision in their control, that's the most mm-hmm. you can do. That's the job, you know? And then right. from there it's God, I hope I get it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hope my name is spoken. They're talking my name in these rooms when no one's around. I hope that they're saying something. Yeah. I uh, hope I'm close. I'm hoping close, but you, you know, you yeah. never, no and honestly it's like when you've kind of forgotten about it is when that call comes in like you were about like i'm up early for a dentist appointment i'm just you know this, yeah, is, my exactly. day <laughs> this is my day i don't know maybe i'll go to costco later i don't know like book more dentist appointments that's that's the takeaway yes. here <laughs> yes so this whole thing the last 40 minutes have been just about the psa for dentist appointments go to the dentist guy go to the dentist that's when you get the best news especially if you're not a, a huge fan of the dentist. Um, so just going in, cause you know, the process of the show, I, you know, any, there's plenty of people who have seen it, maybe plenty of people who've read it. <clears throat> um, how does it feel? Cause now, you know, that you are uh, on the show on Broadway, you are essentially a part of the, the legacy, the canon of something that's been going on for decades and has, so many fans i you know i'm an employee at universal studio so i see people uh in their robes i see people you know like with their wands um all the time and it's just like and it's crazy because it's not even just people like not even just adults who grew up with it it's like little kids like little kids are like growing up with it again and many of them are growing up with the idea you know like they're they've grew up with your character essentially you know um and uh so like how does that how how does that feel this is your part of something really big like how does it feel yeah i mean you know it's 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 incredible to be a part of something that is so beloved worldwide and something that i loved so much growing up i mean you know i grew up right when all the movies were coming out and kind of i mean i i was a little bit I was a little out of my consciousness when the books were coming out. I remember like the the sixth and the seventh coming out. Um, You know, so I grew up right in the middle of that Harry Potter, the first kind of wave of Harry Potter craze. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's amazing to see it coming back and have lived on. You know, we, we get little kids at the stage door all the time in their full robes and their whole family is dressed up, you know, and it's, and it's so great to see. And it's, it's something that really lives on and on and on. And it's a, it's a, it's a world that people love to come back to, you know, there, Mm -hmm. there is a nostalgia quality to it. Um, And even because the show itself is, is, you know, is, is separate artistically from the films, you know, it's all its own music that, I mean, you know, the design looks sort of what you would expect, Hogwarts robes look like, but they're not the same as the, as the movie and then the, and the set and the, everything like it is its own design, which helps us as actors. Cause honestly you kind of, when you do it eight times a week, you do start to kind of forget in the process of it, that this is Harry Potter and it sort of feels like its own world, which is great mm-hmm. for us just to kind of stay in it and keep doing it every day that it, it lives in its own space. But there is still that, 
you step into the theater and it is still what you kind of love about Harry Potter and what the nostalgia right. of it. Um, and it's, you know, uh, being in it is, it's, it, it's really, you know, mainly just an honor to be a, a part, a small part of this, you know, massive phenomenon. And, you know, we get all kinds of Harry Potter fans and Broadway fans, you know, who reach out to us. And it's, it's really, it's really fun to be in conversation with those people and kind of be a part of this, putting on this thing that they love so much you know, at the same time, you, you do realize very quickly that like you are just part of this massive thing and you are kind of, mm -hmm. you're wearing the robes for this time and it's, it's, you know, what you will pass the torch eventually and that, and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And so you, you do kind of have to, you know, realize what the project and the project is serving this this entire global phenomenon and sort of bringing that magic to life for people. Um, the show is the world, you know, like mm -hmm. there, we, you know, and, and I think this is a good thing for Harry is like, there's no stars in Harry Potter. You're not coming to see right. an actor or something on set. You're coming. The only name you need is on the marquee already. Right. And I think right. that that's, it, which is great, you know, for us as actors, cause then it, then it doesn't, um, you know, there's, we're all kind of just doing our jobs there, but, um, but it does, I mean, you know, it, there is, there is, um, you know, we're, the show is now in its, um, fifth year, you know, it's been going on for a while. It's kind of a well-oiled machine. So there is, there's less mm -hmm. pressure on us as replacements to, you know, necessarily build this world for the first time, which is, which is good. Um, yeah. you know, there's, there's the pressure of like, oh man, I don't, <laughs> let's not screw this up now, you know, but, um, right. luckily not going, I don't, I don't think we've done that yet or, or they haven't told us if we have, um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of just, really kind of taking it in and being like, wow, this is so cool to be a little bit on the other side of this, but still be such a fan. And, you know, of like, right. oh man, I get to, you know, flick my wand and say expel the armors on stage every night. Like what a dream come true. You know, like I was doing this in my backyard for free when I was eight, you know, like, come on, they're paying me to do this. What? Um, so I, I think my, one of, one of my cousins <laughs> described it as like, yeah, it's like Harry Potter in the backyard with real fire. <laughs> I was like, that's such a great way to put it. Like that is, you're, you're on the money there. Um, yeah. and so it's fun. It's fun to, you know, kind of live in that world and bring it to life, but it, it is, it does very quickly. You're like, oh man, this thing is huge. And this is such a huge thing. That's bigger than any far bigger than any one person could even really, you know, fathom. Right. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> excuse me. They like, you, you brought up a good point too, because there aren't any like stars really because like, just, just like imagine like Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, like stun casted. Like, I like imagine that, like, so how distracting that would be. Yeah. No, you, you don't need it. You don't need it. And I think that's a wonderful thing about it too. You know, I mean, look, there's plenty of, shows where it's great to go see an actor you know but this show it's it's i think it even helps you know kind of bring you into the world of it if you're not distracted by the fact that it is someone you know it is it is so much about the total experience of doing it right yeah because even um even daniel radcliffe congratulations to him but even totally. daniel radcliffe you know like who has a pretty decent body of work loves the craft and himself and has done some very interesting um some would say weird but also fun things uh since departing the role of harry potter um still is very aware and the world's very aware that that's harry like that's you know yeah where we were all introduced you know and it's such a a, a huge this is a huge thing you know uh but that's incredible <laughs> that you get to do that totally yeah, um, yeah. super incredible um i want to jump in real quick because i you know as i was doing my my research on you for things that i could we could talk about sure i uh noticed that you you know you have a like a, a tutoring company and yes. um so it's like because i i do like the the shed light on the you know rising stars and stuff like that their successes in their journey and stuff like that but every so often i see something else that they're doing that they're pushing forward um that 
maybe they don't get a chance to talk about maybe because of the successes but they don't get a chance to talk <laughs> about but so like it's true it's but, true yeah so i want to talk a little bit about uh your tutoring company so like sure maybe, can you tell the listeners, listeners about it a little bit kind of an introduction to who may not know what you what it is you do yeah 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 no um well the, the company itself is called hyperspace tutors um and it's a company i started with a friend of mine and when we were graduating college um so we've talked about the theater the other half of my background is i i also have a degree in astrophysics um in college wow, which okay. <laughs> um is hence the tutoring um which you know i clearly uh, have gone one path versus the other <laughs> <laughs> my friend is is in fact getting his PhD in physics at Columbia still, so he's like he's legit. I just you know um, <laughs> like to do math on the side, um, and you know we we were graduating and we sort we both we'd both worked for tutoring companies you know because you do when you're in something like physics and STEM like you know it's a pretty easy gig to to do. But we just really, we, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of companies out there that are, you know, I get it from a business. They're kind of there to make money and they're just moving through tutors, moving through tutors, getting these undergrads to do it. And, but it's just, they don't, they don't really prioritize the tutoring relationship at all. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, again, I'm not here to knock anyone, but it, it it did, we both kind of had that experience doing it and we're like, ah, this sort of sucks. Like maybe we should just do it on our own. Mm -hmm. And so we started this company. It was just the two of us at first doing it. And then now we have a couple other tutors who work with us, but we're, 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 we're kind of selective on, you know, tapping people who we actually know you know, and who we know, like who we trust to really have a good rapport with students. Cause that's what we care about. Most of all is just that mm-hmm. relationship, you know, cause like anything like a coach or anything else, like a tutor can be a pretty important person in someone in a young person's life of just, a, you know, especially someone who is, who is in college or recently out of college to kind of just, even if it's not college application tutoring, just to kind of be like, Hey, what, what was your journey? Like, what, what do you, what do you think I should be looking at? Things like that. Um, and so, you know, it's something we both really enjoyed and we started this company as going out. And that's kind of a lot of what I did on the side in that year that I, you know, before I was in Harry Potter of just a lot of physics, a lot of math, calculus, tutoring. Um, I really enjoy it. You know, I really enjoy the process of teaching and, um, and thinking in that, and, you know, and because I said before, like I, I'm someone who really needs, to like step away from the theater and come back. And that's kind of like my college Mm -hmm. experience. That's what I really valued about going somewhere like Columbia and double majoring like that in theater and astrophysics is like, I'd start my morning in a physics lecture and I'd end it in a rehearsal, you know, and I, I really enjoy that back, back and forth, back Mm -hmm. and forth, kind of resetting my mind thinking in different ways. And it, and it gets me thinking, thinking about theater through the lens of physics, thinking about physics through the lens of theater, things that I wrote my, thesis essay um interpreting um uh aaron posner's stupid fucking bird which was the play i was in through the lens of um albert einstein's special relativity Mm. um (laughs) that was a fun project but that was like my i i sort of proposed it being like my thesis advisor is going to reject this she's going to be like what joel what is this go away and but she was really into it and she was like no like she's like this you have to write I was like, okay, fine. Um, you know, and, and that's sort of that, that is my into it. That's what keeps me doing it. Um, and so I, I still, I do still run the tutoring company. I tutor a little less these days because the hours of Harry mm-hmm. Potter tend to conflict with right. the hours in which most students want tutoring. Um, mm-hmm. But we have some wonderful tutors who, who, who are out there, you know, check us out, hyperspacetutors.com. Send us a message. We'll get you hooked up. Um, we have a lot of fun, you know, we, we, it's something that I, it's, it's mostly a passion project at this point, but I, I do enjoy it and I do enjoy kind of helping people find those tutoring relationships. Right. Yeah. So you've heard it here. You've heard it here. Hyperspace tutors is what it's called. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So this is, I mean, this has been incredible. This has been incredible talking to you, um, talking about all about all this stuff um it's stuff that you know you don't really get to hear don't get to really talk too much about it don't get to chat about it a lot and totally i know that you know what you're doing um 
means a lot to people as well. You know, yes, the uh, Harry Potter, you know, but also hyperspace tutors as well. That's, that's something that's very important. Um, we'll get you back on this podcast and we'll only talk about astrophysics. Uh, <laughs> You know, every time I went in for uh, a round of Harry Potter, the associate who was running most of the auditions would ask me an astrophysics question. And at a certain point, I was like, okay, you're just bringing me back because you, like, have questions about astrophysics. <laughs> astrophysics is like, you know, someone who has their thesis coming up, you need questions. This is why you're bringing me back. And now you've passed me. No, exactly. Yeah, the, the, it's the casting assistant, as I, as I was walking to the flying test, like in the 20 feet it was, you know, to the round. She was like, oh, like, I wanted to ask you, like, can you explain Schrodinger's cat to me? <laughs> I was like, I can. But at this exact moment in time, I'm a little more preoccupied by the fact that I'm going to be upside down 30 feet in the air in about five minutes. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's put a pin in that. <laughs> yeah. But if you have questions, contact Hyperspace Tutors. And Absolutely. We'll be able to, hook you, to, to hook you up. We can talk, we can uh, talk all about Schrodinger's cat. Happy to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you, you kind of you, you answered um, one of the questions that I normally close with, like, you know, throughout. Um, but I think, uh, you know, with that, I'll probably pose a, a slightly different question mm -hmm. um, for you. And really just a question that people like, might you know have um in you know in general you know for um that that theater kid you know that theater kid and that because i normally ask this question about you know the person who's about to pursue it but you know that sure. theater kid um you know any like comforting words to that theater kid who's just maybe just like just the kid you know, like watching the Tonys or anything like that, or just like, you know, just um, who still, you know, the light hasn't dimmed just yet. The light hasn't sure. dimmed at all because they're really just kind of early, you know, any comforting words for them to kind of like keep them uh, going with this new love that they probably have for theater right now. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think when you are young and when you are interested in this, couple things. One, you know, a lot of people say a lot of things about what it, what you have to do or what it takes to be an actor um, or what it should take to be an actor. And I think right. one of my least favorite and favorite phrases is that you hear, at least I heard a lot, you know, it's sort of the stereotype is like, well, you will only be an actor if you can't be anything else. You know, like mm -hmm. if you can do anything else, you should do that. That's you, you I literally, you, you know, I, I've, I'm a big believer in reading all the sort of acting books, Uta Hagen, you know, Stella Adler, all those, but that's afraid. That's, that's something that you will see in books like that. Those you'll see that like, if you, there's anything else you can do, you should do it. And you shouldn't be an actor because it's really hard. The really hard part is true. I think mm -hmm. it does a disservice to young people, you know, and, you know, and we can be honest, like, like I found myself of like, the, there were other things that I could do. I, you know, I, I did go and get a degree in astrophysics. I could be doing that right now. Absolutely. But I think that to me, the critical part of that phrase is actually reframing it of like, if I, and this is kind of how I made the decision to pursue acting first of like, I knew that as I was coming out of college, like if I, if I was going to go do anything else, I would spend a lot of my time a wondering what could have been and be thinking about how do I get back to doing theater, doing something creative, doing that. Like I would sort of spend a lot of my, even if I was enjoying doing whatever else I was doing, I would spend a lot of my time thinking about how do I find my way back? The thing about that is I realized pretty quick of like, I couldn't do anything else without feeling that want to at least try. And so that's how I think about like, you should be an actor if you can't do anything else without thinking about <laughs> wanting to, <laughs> you know, be in it and be doing it. And True. I guess I would offer that to kids of like, you know, people ask like, how do, how do I know if I want to be an actor, if that's really what I want to do? And I think that it comes down to kind of soul searching of like, it, like, is that really what gets you up in the morning and gets you going? Um, for instance, doing Harry Potter, like, 
doing eight shows a week is rough, right? It is hard. There are days when I do not want to go to the theater and do <laughs> this three and a half hour show. And even when I'm there, I'm like, right. oh man, I got to do this like so much. But every time I start doing the show, it makes me feel better. Mm. If I have a headache, if my stomach hurts, like, and that's how I know that I, that I do love doing it. There are parts of it that I do not like the grind, <laughs> of, you know, like, but I know that I love it at the end of the day because doing it makes me feel, it takes me out of whatever sort of funk I'm in. And I think mm -hmm. that that is, is really like, if, if that is true for you, then it's a totally valid path to pursue. You know, and I think that that's, and, and, if, and if it's not true, that's also good information. Like there's probably something else that does that for you and that might be your thing and go do it. And you can always, you know, you don't have to be a professional actor to be involved in the theater at all. Mm -hmm. It's, there's so many ways into it, but, um, that's kind of the, the realistic advice I would give any young person seriously considering acting is like, you gotta be real with yourself about what is this the thing that does it for you? And is it true that even if you, you, you know, most of the actors know are very smart people could be doing anything else in the world, mm -hmm. but they're here because this is the thing that like they can't live without. Right. Yeah. Right. Well said. Very well said. Joel, if somebody wanted to become a fan of Joel Myers, how would they be able to find you? Oh, well, um, let's see. I am not a great social media presence, but I am, you can find me on Instagram at Joel P Myers. That's two E's in the Myers, not just one. Um, uh, and uh, you can, if, you know, if you, you can look, look at my website, it's joelpmyers.com. You can, I have a, I have a message box. You can send me a fun fact about um, physics and or anything else. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, if you are looking, if you want to talk math, hyperspacetutors.com. <laughs> absolutely absolutely and go ahead and check out that wand dance i saw the i saw the oh at the edge yeah yeah, yeah. yeah talk yeah. talk about fear of heights <laughs> dancing on the glass floor you know on however many stories up that was uh that was like that was like 5 a.m too when we did that so that was that was very fun but surreal morning <laughs> very fun but surreal morning and uh yeah and little did you know he's afraid of heights a little bit <laughs> just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit so this was great um i'm gonna go ahead and sign out right now it was awesome talking to you yeah you too thanks for having me yeah no problem and this has been performers wanted and we are out